What's up, Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome into the Chiefs Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Harrison Graham. And now that the NFL trade deadline is over with, I'm going to take a look at some free agent targets for Kansas City. Could more moves be coming by general manager Brett Veach? We know, you know, he's always, you know, looking for ways to boost this roster with trades, free agents, whatever the case may be. So, don't roll out anything when it comes to Mr. Brett Veach. All right, let's get to 10 players here. How about Sidney Jones, who Seattle tried to trade at the NFL trade deadline, but ultimately ended up releasing him this week. And Sidney Jones is a guy who has a lot of experience at a time was a pretty decent cornerback in this league with some success, kind of a CB2 type uh, earlier in his career. Now this year fell out of favor with Seattle, only played in three games and had just five tackles, but just a couple years ago had a couple picks. So did he in 2019, 17 combined breakups in that season as well. 10 breakups last year. I mean, he's a guy who gets his hands on the football uh, and you look at the Chiefs CB room, yeah, they were able, willing to trade Rashad Fenton because they're pleased with Jalen Watson, Josh Williams, Trent McDuffie's coming back, but maybe Sidney Jones could help replace Rashad Fenton. Maybe you're like, hey, come in be your CB4 or something like that. Give you a guy with some experience. He could chase a championship as well here. We'll see what happens. Waivers uh, come and go today. We will see if a team claims him. If not, uh, maybe he signs with the Chiefs. How about Odell Beckham Jr.? Yes, we're going to keep mentioning him uh, as long as rumors are out there, as long as he remains unsigned. Uh, the latest chatter is that uh, he may not be ready until early mid-December. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. But talked about him a lot. He was a key cog in the Rams' uh, Super Bowl push a year ago. Uh, of course, tore his ACL in that Super Bowl, but uh, played really well in the postseason before that. I, I don't know where exactly he fits in. I think from a pure talent standpoint, he'd be the most talented receiver you have. But obviously, Juju's playing really well. MVS is playing his role. Hardman is. You've got Tony now. So, I mean, you're very, very deep at receiver. Uh, but if OBJ's not going to sign until very late in the year, A, he's not going to be able to cost that much. I mean, teams aren't going to give him $8 million to play for a month within the playoffs. Uh, and B, um, you know, maybe he's just there to chase a ring, be around good culture, and then he'll sign somewhere next year for hopefully more money for his sake. But uh, wouldn't rule anything out. Odell Beckham Jr. still remains unsigned. Should the Chiefs go out and sign OBJ once he's healthy? Type OBJ for yes. Type no BJ for no. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. How about Tack McKinley, who's had a bit of a funky career early on, looked like a promising pass rusher, and has kind of tatered off as of late. Uh, spent some time with the Rams this year. Didn't go well. His career stats, so he's got 20 sacks in 64 career games. So almost every third game he's getting a sack, and over the course of a season, you know, that's six sack season on average. Uh, three forced fumbles, 53 quarterback hits. He's a guy who's got talent, but – in four games with the Rams this year, one tackle. They parted ways with him. That did not uh, work well for Tack McKinley. Uh, but he's still young. He's still talented. There's still probably some promise there. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It kind of feels like he's had his chances. But he'll probably get another chance at some point. We'll see if the Chiefs are that chance. Certainly pretty thin at defensive end. Have you become a Lord yet? Well, you can become one with established titles as they are a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. This project is based in a, on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. My certificate is coming in the mail. This is what it's going to look like. Pretty sweet. Uh, uh, I am now Lord Harrison Graham. And, hey, I feel good about uh, doing my part uh, uh, with uh, these guys because they plant a tree with every order, work with global charities, one tree planted in trees for the future to support those uh, reforestation efforts. Here's a cool deal as well. The first 200 people that use promo code chat at establishedtitles.com slash chat to purchase a plot of land, A, you're going to save 10% off, and B, you will be within walking distance of my plot of land in Scotland. We can start our own Chiefs Report Kingdom over there. So 
go get going with this. It's a perfect holiday gift, a fun gag gift. Uh, the prices are very reasonable as well. EstablishedTitles.com slash chat. That'll get you 10% off with promo code chat. All right, uh, Alex Okafor, a familiar face. Could he be an option at defensive end? Uh, Okafor remains unsigned, but his three seasons with the Chiefs, uh, 2019 to 2021, pretty solid as a rotation guy. Uh, and by the way, he missed, I think, like 12 games in those three years. Otherwise, the numbers would have been better. Nine and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, 26 quarterback hits. So he wasn't always getting home, but he was getting pressure quite often. And he's been tweeting about the Chiefs, doing some analysis as well. Uh, for KC Sports Network, they've had him on a few times. Tweeted out uh, during, uh, I believe this is the last Chiefs game on the 23rd, Spag's appreciation tweet. So he knows the system. He's a fan of Steve Spagnola. He's been watching this team closely. Um, this could make sense if you're just trying to get a guy that knows the system, can be a rotation player, uh, and, uh, you know, he's not going to do anything special, but uh, can be a guy that if you put him out there, you're not going to be worried that he's going to be lost or anything like that. Should the Chiefs bring back Alex Okafor? I'd be open to it. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Get your votes in down in the comments. Staying on the defensive line but going interior, and Dominican Sue. A player I talked about coming into the season, I thought the Chiefs were a team that could make some sense as a veteran interior defensive lineman because you got Chris Jones and, you know, Derek Nottie's had a solid season, but you can't ever have enough defensive linemen. And Sue has 12 sacks the past two years. I thought him and Jones on the interior could be a pretty dangerous combo, and especially with Cl Frank Clark suspended on the edge, this defensive line unit as a whole is a bit thin. They had to activate Taylor Stallworth from the practice squad a couple of weeks ago when they lost Hershon Wharton. Kalen Saunders has done some nice things this year. That's been good to see, but uh, I would still be open to Sue, even at this point in time. Uh, he's a vet. He's been around. He plays nasty, uh, and you always like to have one, of those, one or two of those guys. If you want daily videos for free when it comes to the Kansas City Chiefs, look no further. Hit that subscribe button right now. It's 100% free. We got you covered with the latest news rumors, live watch parties. We'll be live for a Chiefs-Titans watch party on Sunday Night Football. So hit the subscribe button and join the Chiefs report. All right, five more players here. Joukowsky Tart, uh, who I am really surprised he's unsigned. He spent the last few years with the 49ers. The Eagles picked him up briefly this year, but then they parted ways. Uh, he provides depth and experience at that safety position, has played in some high leverage games in his career, I think as a number three, number four safety, he certainly has a lot of value uh, for any team. And I think that would also be the case here as well. How about Everson Griffin, who's 34 years old now. He's certainly getting up there in age. He's had, you know, some off the field challenges, some mental health issues he's had to battle through uh, during uh, kind of the second half of his career. Uh, but last year in nine games, he had five sacks. I mean, had he played a whole season, he probably would have had double digit sacks for the Minnesota Vikings. He's a bigger defensive end, which is what Steve Spagnola likes coming off the edge. This is a guy to me that could still be productive. Like, uh, not a starter, but kind of another Carlos Dunlap type where he can rotate in, get some pass rush, uh, and just help your unit overall. I like this idea. I would be very open to Griffin or really any defensive end. I think the Chiefs need to sign one. What do you guys think? Do the Chiefs need to sign a defensive end? They were linked to some edge rushers at the trade deadline. Nothing was able uh, to happen. Type S for sign or P for pass. I think they probably should. I mean, even in the short term, you're going to be pretty thin without Frank Clark. So S for sign or P for pass. A few more players here. Daryl Williams on the offensive line, who I think we talked about once or twice in the offseason, has positional versatility, can play guard, can play tackle. Uh, you know, this offensive line is in a pretty good place. Uh, Lucas Niang is starting to work his way back as they opened his practice window. But, you know, Trey Smith has been a little up and down this year. Uh, Daryl Williams can be a guy that gives you some depth at that right guard, right tackle spot, maybe even left guard if something were to happen to Joe Tooney. I like that about his game. Uh, has spent time with the Bills as well uh, the last couple of years. You know that's a team you're going to go up against. Hey, if nothing else, maybe he gives you a little intel on what they're doing. But uh, we'll see if he ends up signing with the team. Linval Joseph, back to the defensive line. He's probably the best run-stopping 
uh, defensive tackle that is still out there, which at times the past couple years, stopping the run has been an issue. It's been up and down this year. We saw how dominant of a defensive run-stopping performance we saw against Tampa, uh, but in other games it hasn't been so good. Uh, I mean, you got King Henry coming up. You're not going to make a signing by Sunday, I don't think, uh, but uh, that'll be a good litmus test for this group coming off the bye week. Derrick Henry's been on fire. All right, how about Josh Gordon? Um, now, this would be strictly a practice squad signing. You're not going to sign him to the active roster. He couldn't make your team out of training camp. But there was mutual interest in him returning to the practice squad after a uh, cut-down day. He opted to go to the Titans because he thought there'd be better opportunities there uh, to play on their active roster, which – I don't blame him because that's a much worse receiving core, but things didn't work out there. Hey, I, I'm cool with him back on the practice squad. Seemed to be a good teammate. He and the Chiefs liked each other. I have no problem with that, but just keep in mind it would be practice squad only. All right, name a free agent the Chiefs should go out and sign. Uh, let me know in the comment section. I think OBJ is the one we're all you know keeping an eye on. Sidney Jones watch today. We'll see uh, where he ends up or if he clears waivers. Maybe he becomes an option. Uh, let me know if there's a player I'm missing as well. That's going to do it for today's Chiefs report. Be sure to subscribe. We will have you guys covered all season long. I'm Harrison Graham. Until next time, go Chiefs. Thank you.